The city of New Orleans will never be the same. When you mention New Orleans anywhere around the world, everybody's we, eyes light it, up. It, it's, it's awful down here, man. And I can't emphasize it enough, man. Uh, this is crazy. People stay there people and are dying. Their lives. They don't have homes. They don't have jobs. I'm at the point now where it don't matter. This is a major, major, major deal. I had gone home for the weekend and I was kind of hanging out and I was asleep and my parents actually called me like, what well, have you seen the hurricanes shift it? It's coming to New Orleans now. I was like, oh, this isn't, <laughs> this isn't too good. It was just kind of scary at first. We didn't know what was gonna happen. What exactly do I need to do? What's happening? This is, we just graduated. I've, I've never done a hurricane. I don't know what's going on. I'm like, well, can you come in? When I went in for the hurricane, you know, when I. I'd only been working there for a couple months and normalcy kind of changed. We didn't know what was going to happen. We were going to be here, a storm was, a major storm was going to hit us sometime that Monday morning and we had no idea how we would survive or if we were going to survive. You know, in the past I've never had to really worry about that kind of stuff. You always, you know, you kind of take it for granted a little bit. You know, just kind of put on a brave face and try to move on for the next couple hours while y'all are still on shift. It was difficult. We just coped together. We got together as a group, talked about our fears, and just reassured each other that we were going to make it out of here after taking care of our patients, after they left the hospital, that we would be out of here together and we weren't leaving anyone behind. Right in the middle of when the hurricane was starting to get kind of bad, we had no TV or news or anything. You know, it's hard to really grasp the situation that was going on. The worst scenario in my mind that would happen was the wind would hit us pretty hard. You know, we'd get 140, 50 mile per hour winds, and we'd lose some windows, which would make the situation a little bit dicey, losing patient win rooms and patient windows and all that. We'd have to do nursing care and all that. And all this, you know, kind of afternoon we were down on the street the storm had passed there was no flooding we walked in front of Tulane walked down to around where charity was and you know took some pictures of the damage around there but we were like well you know this is pretty good we we dodged a pretty big bullet we we're like whoo we it's it passed us you know we survived another one well we had backup generators so we didn't we thought we'd still have enough power to do everything that was necessary about 6 a.m. our supervisors came down sat us down and told us that the levees had grown. The levees can't hold up. They, they big enough, but they can't hold enough. No five, not no category five. But the water do is this. So whatever's on the city right now is gonna get destroyed. Straight up, y'all were screwed. The levee's broke, the city's flooding. We're gonna have to evacuate the hospital. We ran on emergency generators for about another 24 hours. Once those went, it was pitch black. There were no lights in the city. It was just nerve wracking at times. You run into walls and the chairs and the other people that you just didn't see. All our medication system runs by power and electronics, so we pretty much, it was weird just to have the medication room wide open. We just kind of had to sift through and make sure it was the right medicine to go. And this time we're actually by flashlight, or I was personally using my cell phone light that I had left and trying to find which medications were in. I mean, the halls were pitch dark. Being that it was so hot, we weren't exactly um, 
keeping very clean. We're, you know, in the nursing profession, we can't wash our hands, which is one of the things that, you know, we do constantly in the field. We had our little antibacterial hand gel, and I, I mean, simple things. I couldn't take a bath, so I would get alcohol wipes and just, you know, wipe off my face, wipe off my arms. Following doctor's orders, they continued to order certain tests to be run, drawing of blood, IV fluids that we had to continue even though we didn't have power. You know, our supervisors were real positive, but as positive as you could be about the situation. We had put in place everything that we could think of um, to do beforehand so we wouldn't have to make some of these real tough decisions. If the patients weren't here, we wouldn't have had to be here, but we were. It was our duty to be here. We were getting sketchy reports of looting going on down Canal Street, which is blocked, well, a block away from Tulane Hospital. We were scared for our lives because these people we had heard were armed, were trying to get everything they could. We, we had the only safe haven pretty much in the city. We were terrified that these looters were going to come to the hospital and do something with us, hostage situation. We could not, our, our, our police officers couldn't ensure the safety of the yeah. Building. The Thursday night we slept in the garage with all of our patients because the decision was made that we couldn't secure our building anymore for the safety of our people. You can see people walking down Canal Street with TVs on their shoulder. Moving the patients down from the floor and we, on the gurneys or the stretchers, we transport them to the uh, parking garage here where on the eighth floor was our makeshift helipad. So we got word that we were going to pretty much have to sleep in the parking garage because they didn't feel safe for anyone to go back in the hospital. We heard that there were people in the street shooting, looting, and that people were just, it was basically a war zone out there. And Thursday night we had lost our ability to secure the hospital and we had uh, looters and, and other people in the hospital. So at that point our security force could only secure the parking garage itself. Our rescue missions had been halted on, on both nights because of people shooting at the helicopters as they tried to take off and there were also some shots fired at the boats coming from charity. We didn't know what blew up. We thought it might have been the Chalmette refinery. We had all these huge helicopters landing on the A4 of a parking garage. We were right on the seventh floor and I was like, you know, maybe the foundation wasn't strong enough. We were in a bad situation at that point. Just not knowing when we would get out of there, not knowing, you know, what might happen. I was out there. Well, <clears throat> after we'd got all the patients out that Thursday night, we knew we were next that Friday morning. Everyone arose probably at daylight, daybreak, and we just kind of waited around. And of course the city was quiet. There was no choppers, no helicopters, and we were waiting and waiting and still nothing. But about nine o'clock, you, you could hear helicopters, the activity happening again. And one was heading towards the hospital and it was just like, we're getting out, we're getting out today. They're coming for us. Everyone was hugging. Everyone was just, okay, we're getting out. We're just so happy that we're gonna be out of here. If it was directly home, we just wanted out of the city to the next place, to eventually get to the next place and the next place home. Our job was done, that we were finally able to get out and that we were safe and nothing had happened to us. And yeah, within the next 24 hours, so we're gonna finally be able to see our families who've been worrying about us for so long. I mean, it was, I've never felt that excited and exhilarated about something in my entire life. Seeing the helicopters coming and hearing them land on our roof was just incredible. To know that there were people out there risking their lives to save ours. And, you know, after being in there for, for several days, it was, it was scary at times. I mean, I kept, you know, as much faith and kept my positive attitude. And, you know, I always knew that, I knew that I was going to get out of there.
Tulane had no uh, fatalities. We had 100% of our patients, faculty, staff, and family were evacuated alive.